Hello everybody, this is Abby Normal and welcome to Juniper's Knot. I hope I'm saying that correctly. It's a brand new day, a brand new new year. Happy new year everyone! It's very belated, happy new year. Actually by the time you see this video you'll be like, Abby it's February. <laughs> uh, it's been a very, very stressful and eventful time. As you can probably hear, the mic sounds a little bit different. I couldn't get my earphones to work in my computer, I don't know why. Plugged them in, turned off the sound in my uh, sound, sound blast racks and it was just like, nope, nope. You turn it off the set. Nope, nope, can't hear anything. You're not allowed. We disallow it. So I was like, you know what? All right. So I just plugged into the back of the Blaster X, but in doing so, I had to move the mic forward. So if I'm like, so if you're like, Abby, you sound shorter. It's because the microphone is now above me. <laughs> so if it were to fall forward, yes, I would die more than likely. Anyway, let us get into Juniper's Knot. I know nothing about this game other than that it was on Steam and it was free. So click to start. Please don't be loud. Press F1 in game to help. Okay, gotcha. I hope that doesn't mess up my recording, whatever. Please don't be loud. Please don't be loud. Please don't suddenly be like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, ooh. that's pretty. That is a pretty ass background. It's, uh, it's okay, it's a little bit louder. Okay, uh. Ooh, 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 it's rumbling. Ooh, I like it. Ooh, okay, uh, window full screen. Yep, uh, yep, 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 okay. F1 to help, text speed. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. Let's start the game. I've not started anything, as you can see, so I don't know what this game's about. And I can't remember who it's by, but for some reason, I'm getting like Cupid vibes. You guys remember when I played Cupid, right? I remember some people were like, this is a good story. Much of these stone walls and floors have weathered into dirt and dust, revealing the foundation. Much of the ceiling too has crumbled to the ground, layering in flecks and bits. Below me is such tired soil. Tired, tired soil. Pa. There isn't much to do here but burn dead leaves and wait. What are we waiting for? What are you waiting for? Love me, love you. Sorry. Watch the smoke rise. Curl up fresh and tickle the inside of your nose. Dull as bones it is. But what can I do? I'm stuck. Some might say cursed. I'd rather say bound. I don't like to think very much about it. It me. Fire. It me. Calcifer. Me all oh, your bacon burn. I kneel to the small fire I've started taking up a few embers and loom into my palm. It's this glow that stirs me and reminds me that my heart is still beating. I bring the scorched earth close to my face, shut my eyes and breathe it in. I taste it and spit. It's barren. I'm probably going to wait here forever. What? Is that me? There's an unnatural rustling not far off west. West, eh? Oh, it's me! It's me! Horned demon girl! What is it? Who? Another here? My eyes sharpen and my ears perk up. My long ass elf ears. Ooh. I feel my heart thumping into my throat. Should I be forward? Give a call? Would that work? If this was a horror movie, yeah, no. Wouldn't be a good idea. Cry out, please. Help! Help! Damsel! A fool sort of lie. But would that work? No. Go still. Listen. Just listen. Oh, I don't like it. Whatever it is, it's right busy about here. Noise is tumbling rough from old doorways, chests wide open, shops and homes are explored. A scavenger then? Someone found this place? Tut. Mm. Oh, sorry. Hearing these sounds is just odd. It's finally happened, you're finally gone crazy. Just accept it. It shouldn't be odd, but it is. Strange. I should remember these sounds. Oh, it's getting close, is it? Am I imagining this? No, no, it's, it's surely in the manor now, poking around the kitchen and the lounge. It's a big ass rat. Rats of unusual size. I don't think they exist. I decide on the chance that it will find its way into the ballroom to stand. I take a good posture and await this new company. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, to my surprise, he shows up at the door within the next minute. A boy? A man? What kind of thing is this again? He's carrying a pack and a bottle on his waist. Maybe he, he's a traveller then? Doesn't look like he noticed me yet. 
He just wants to in and stare adrift. Snap his neck. Just snap his neck and eat his flesh. Ah! <laughs> I refuse to I catch his eye. He moves a little closer to look me in the face and then some more to see my feet. He stops there. He's staring now and doing nothing more. Oh, dear child! Come here, <laughs> come here, little one. <laughs> come here. As if realizing something, he stiffens. His heart beats loud in the air. I need your help, so come on, come here. He doesn't bend. What is he up to? What does he think this is? I speak again, this time with a little bite. The hell are you waiting for, tit? Wow, a little bite. Oh, have I been rude? Have I been rude? Oh, well, you were cordially invited to meet your dumb legs. For the first conversation of words I've spoken in centuries, they could have been worse. They, they, they really could have been. He shakes with fear and stands back, really. I would be shaking with fear and be like, did you just call me a tit? <laughs> a fiend? A fiend? Slow are you? Does it matter? What are you pissing your trousers for? Get over here. Ugh. No way, you'll eat my soul! Oh, what? A smile cracks along my face. Ha! Ah, ah, ha! Ah, your soul! You don't have a soul! <laughs> Imagine if you said that, she's like, you don't have a soul! And the kid's like, what? <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, when was it last night I laughed like this? I grin, I grin so brightly, watching Chaplin while he shrinks back a little and a little more. Eh? Uh? <laughs> now, person? Person? Yeah, person. You person, you're just perfect. A jester. Won't you lend me an ear? After I eat your soul. Ah! At my laughter he glares. Sealing himself, he answers me. You're not catching me, demon. Got that? I've read the stories. I'm tired, but I ain't stupid. Am I that famous? Oh! Bless you, I left a mark. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, hell, I already know. Oh. Beans! Devils! Demons! Oh yeah, I know how it is. How is it? You're a foul and you try to trick people. Oh, you're all foul, sorry. So. Trick you? Ha ah, ah. ha! Oh, I just can't believe it. What what happened in the years I've been gone? Stop. And what if I'm not trying to trick you? Person, what if I just want to hear you? Just want to hear me? What the hell? <gasps> What's your language? Like what it... <laughs> like, damn it! Like, what's it you've read, lad? Do you tell. I'd love to hear a story. I'm a little bit bored. Uh, I'm gonna go. You turn pale on a bloodthirsty wicked fiend. Look, I know something dirty when I see it. You ain't fooling no one. <laughs> He's so precious. All right, all right. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you I like us all. Oh, last fiends, devil demons, I'm clearly trying to win your extravagant soul through my dastardly wit. Honest and true, I'm a rook. But please, please, at least tell me of what you've read. Why the hell do you want to listen to me so much? Because I'm bored. And your voice, ah, oh, your voice, I swoon. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, now it's time to do Ah! Poor feathers. I really do want to listen. Would you be so kind? Ah, oh, he's genuinely considerate. Such a delight. I do want to hear him. We worried about his soul. In the meantime, I look him over a little more fondly. He's got a fair face, but through the fabric of his shirt, I can see that he's muscled. As said on, he's he's as tired young. I suppose even the soldier boys seemed to lean in the days I rode at Marl. Molly? I wonder what it is he does. He smells like an animal in the most pleasant way that can be said. It's quite good. Also, he has the faintest scent of watercress about him, mingled with black oil. Peculiar lad. So he smells like animals, watercress, and black oil. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he dips chicken in black oil and then re feathers them. He feathers and tars chickens, yes. Ha! Huh. Hmm? I'd really better not stick around. Ugh. I guess I can tell you some things, though. Yeah, I guess I can tell you. As long as you stay put, you hear. What's keeping me from you is more powerful than I care to challenge, person. Yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> right, is this a little kid with an attitude? Yeah, right, whatever, whatever. Ugh. Ugh. 
Here's a story, one from a book I read a lot when I was little. <gasps> oh, pardon, pardon. I found it very hard to think of you of any littler. What? <laughs> there was a cobbler in White Acre who had nothing to eat. He was poorer than dirt and he didn't have a girl and it made him real sore. He didn't have a girl? A dame, sweetheart. He didn't have a wife. Ah, I thought he was gay. Continue. While he was walking down an alley, he met this man. He had on a dark cloak with a hood that covered his eyes and the cobbler could make heads or tails of it. He stopped and asked the cloak man if he'd like his shoes worked on. But that's stupid. Why would he do that? Because he needed all the work he could get. But he could have gone around ruining shoes if what he needed was work. The cloak man said he wasn't wearing shoes, but he could use a pair. But obviously the cobbler's a cobbler, so he don't make shoes. He tells them that. And the cloak man says quickly, I could really use some new shoes. The cobbler looks at him and says he can get them if the guy's sick. And the cloak man says, why would you do that? I'd do something for you then. And the cobbler says, like what? And the cloak man says, perhaps anything. He leans forward darkly as he says this smirk of action. Now I know what you're thinking, I've heard this one before and now it goes, well you don't. Because the cobbler says, perhaps not, and he walks away. Oh, how exciting. But here's the thing, while he's walking he notices the alley is longer than usual. He doesn't think about it though, he thinks he's just tired from work and keeps walking. But while he's walking he sees another man in a book and a cloak. He stops and asks if the man could use shoes getting worked on. The cloak man says he doesn't have any shoes. Cobbler stops and looks at him and says he'd better get moving. The cloaked man says he could really use some new shoes. And while he's moving, you know, yeah, he keeps running into this man in a cloak and he can't find the end of the alley. Actually, every time it takes longer and longer till he sees the man in the cloak. On the eighth time he runs into the man, he stops and asks, What's the game? And the cloaked man looks at him with yellow eyes says he could really use some new shoes. Mm. For what? The copper says. I don't know. The cloak man says, perhaps anything. What do you want? The cobbler knows exactly what he wants, but a fiend have yellow eyes and he knows a fiend. Nonsense. I actually sighed hearing that. So what you're telling me is, if this story is anything to adhere to, is that I might have already trapped you. No, I don't think you did. Why not? He shrugs. I don't think you did. Hmm. I really must say, your manner of storytelling is queer. Hey, you can't use that word! Only we can use that word! <laughs> it's strange. Um, I don't know, it's just very strange to my big ears, I guess. I do have big ears. How's your story end? The cobbler gets desperate and makes a pact with the fiend to get new shoes by the next day. The fiend will give him gold for him to do that. So the fiend gives him gold, but he doesn't make it. The fiend traps him in the alley and can't leave. His soul is taken and he is damned. The fiend eats his soul and leaves the alley for a farm. A farm? Yeah, I know. That's comedy. I think it's supposed to mean something, but it. Point is, don't get caught up with fiends no matter what. You're getting caught up with the fiend right now. Well, you don't feel right. I what? He shakes his head. Nothing. I look at him and try to figure him out. Figure out his opinions and his story. In the time he's told it, he seems to have taken another idea of me. I'm not sure why that is either. I appreciate you telling me that story. Don't mention it. Mm -hmm. So opaque. You're still wary of me? Yeah, a little. I frown. Well, do you want me to tell you another story? Or oh, like where this is going. <laughs> um, the unsolicited offer throws me. Is he really asking? Yes. Yes. But no, if I'm too eager, I can't ask for that. No. I pause. No, I'm fine. But if you say so. I'm going to go now. Go. Yeah. See you, bitch. I have to go, so I'm going. This is awkward. This is awkward! Ah. Uh, 
he begins to turn around. No! Oh. Uh, stay. Please stay, please. I won't take your soul. Honest, I won't. And then, like an idiot, I move my hand out, reaching for him without singly, without singular wanting. I move past the second meter, past the circle's edge with my fingers, and withdraw with a start as they're set afire. Dropping to my knees, I scream, I cry out at howl, clutching the flames and smothering them. Tears crawl down my face, and I snarl with pain. I shut my eyes and moan. I hear him step closer. You're stuck there? Looking up at him from the ground, I feel my teeth chattering. Oh no, I know why I want him to stay. Yes, I know. To rend him. It was as if, as if it just wasn't so funny enough to find down through the walls and glasses born through stone so close, just outside the putrid circle. Now there's a human breathing before me. Comedy. Everywhere but here, but near to me, to my desolating blood. These years have damned me, cut and clawed beneath my skin. The stars in this world, but never, nevertheless blighting. I hate it, I hate, I hate it so much. I hate the feeling it gives to my heart and the strength it takes him kind. I hate it. My flesh heats and I look away from him. Looking into his eyes enrages me. How long have you been here? Long enough to beg. Long enough, you hear? Too long I've been in this stinking pile. It doesn't matter to you. I want to know. Well, I don't want to tell, eh? Oh, sorry, miss. Miss? I take a look at my clicking, stuttering hand, my sight still blurred with tears. It's sizzling. Small blazes dance between the fingers. I take my tongue out, soothing the burns. You're a bold one, eh? Calling me a flat. Well, but no, you know flapper lady. This is set in the 1920s. Hey, she's a flapper, I see. Hey, it means something different now. Miss is just what you're supposed to call older ladies, out of respect. Flapping the flames from the back of my hand, I glance at him. Are that right? Are you all right? I suck my ring finger and squint. What's that? All right, fine. Is that okay? All right, all right. I, I, I am a fiend, yes, heal fast. Though I can still feel it snap and pop in the joints of I whistle cool air through my digits and take myself from the ground. Are you going to stay? Uh, I could. Ah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm actually lost right now. Lost? Lost, is it? Lost. That's a sweet irony. Don't look so adult person. The irony is quite obvious here, isn't it? I think after all, I cannot even be lost. Forever and ever I'll know where I am. And where am I is stuck. I laugh again, but he doesn't find it funny. It doesn't seem to find it much of anything at all. I put it, wiping away a figurative tear. Huh. I know this place so intimately, I in red your face. He jerks and gives his head a shake. If, if you, huh? Uh, if you know where this is, do you know where's more? Uh, I know where's more. Look around you. There's more everywhere. Hey. Ah, so earnest. Don't know what more is. I know moors. Moors? Huh. Moors, moors. You follow? I don't know what those are. It's like the Yorkshire moors. My, my, ain't this a right dizzy jig we're dancing? Time's making calls for us, us both. <laughs> his looks a bit hazy, as though he's having a hard time keeping his eyes fresh. I turn my head silently. What's more, person? Where I was born? Deep. A town? A new town? City? I think it's been here for a while. That right. He doesn't speak, and I glance over just quickly enough to catch him at the end of the novel. Did you know this place was a moor for a time? Miss, I don't know what... What is that? It is a dead place, a wet place. I too was born in a moor. Mm. Mm. Can't your stomach read a mood? 
Hidden Hell. I was about to tell a tale. Uh, sorry. Oh, it was. <laughs> I was like, what was that noise? It sounded like a wild animal. It's just stomach going. You're hungry, is it? Starve. Us fiends here, we only eat souls. And only for pleasure. Quit joking. Joking? Hey, you got any food? <laughs> what are you bluffing on about? Do I look like I got food? I don't got any food, idiot. However, here. I thrust out my hands just before the barrier, palms up. Give me the chestnuts in your pack, I can smell them. He hesitates. Why? So I can gobble them up? What do you think? I'll cook them for you. Without long from the branch or the ground. It smells like you haven't cooked them, and nor have you eaten them. You prefer the taste of them cooked? He nods slowly. I twitch my fingers waiting. Is there something you want for this? Your company for the morning, till noon. That's it? I nod. Alright, de deal! His words spoken like a knell, it resonates deeply, echoing and shakes ash from the walls. Oh. Startled, the boy covers his mouth. Ha! You made a deal with the devil, bitch! Ha ha! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deal, was it? <laughs> I smile. He. Did I just. Shit! My mum said don't make deals with the devil! Ah, you made a pact. Shibiru! Yep. Shaking his head, he sighs. Wordlessly, it looks like he just did like a little curtsy, like, ma'am. Wordlessly, carefully, he takes off his pack and opens it up. Mm. Withdrawing a bushel of nuts in two hands, he moves forward. I look down at him, still waiting. With steady movements, he brings his hands to mine. He holds my gaze and I don't move at all. But I do think, I think, wait, couldn't I just, couldn't I just, you know, Stop his neck. Quickly, just my hands tense, but it ends with a thought. He drops the heap into my palms and my fingers curl about. Again, I turn up my lips. Seeing this, he hops back. Give me a moment. I take all but one into my left hand, holding the last between my right thumb and forefinger. Oh, so like a pinch. Opening my mouth, I bring it between my teeth and puncture it with one of my fangs. I bite through the shell, making a rough cut from one into the other, and take it out. Observing the inner flesh, I spit out the shreds. Satisfied, I go on to carve the second, third, fourth, and so on. Oh, oh I'm cracking the nuts with my teeth. I was like, what am, what am I doing? When I finish, I hold the chestnuts aloft and make a hearth of my hand. This will take a while, person, but not so long. Might we talk some? Uh, yeah, sure. Then have a seat. Where did we leave off before your stomach so rudely interrupted? He sits, chin on his knees and eyes half-lidded. More something. Ah, yes. I'll tell you a story about moors in return for yours. Though rather than a story, a chat would be nice, eh? Save you a story for a bit later. What do you want to talk about? Moors. Am I going to talk about moors in the next episode? Because uh, this this game this, this is a confusing game. It seems one moment I'm doing one thing and the next I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> where, where like a second ago we were in a completely different part of the conversation and now we're somewhere else. Or like a second ago there was a different type of atmosphere. And now I'm like, am I going to kill him? Am I going to eat him? Am I romantically attached to him? I don't know. Uh, questions. But we'll find out in the next episode of Juniper's Not. If you liked it, give the video a thumbs up. Don't, don't be afraid to comment and feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.